Hi guys, welcome to my second video. Um, I guess I see this one as my introduction of myself to you, as someone who's who's new to bushcraft. Or, uh, well, not new to bushcraft, more like new to what we call bushcraft today, the, the marketed sort of paradigm, you know. Um, look, I, I was born in the 70s. For me growing up, camping meant, you know, you built a teepee fire or like a log cabin fire, you lit it with matches, or a little later in life I started using the ferro rod. A knife was whatever worked. In my case, it was most often a Swiss Army knife, you know. Um, so all the stuff that we, we sort of see on YouTube vids and in the forums and all this, the new woodcraft stuff, I like to call it, wasn't there when I was growing up, you know. Um, and then for a good 20 years, I sort of, I lost track of it. You know, I started spending more and more time in front of a computer, got a job in, as a designer. Um, I'm no longer a designer, uh, but I just got used to being in front of a computer. Like, at work, I'm in a cubicle. At home, I would be in front of the computer playing games or, <clears throat> you know, emailing, watching YouTube videos these days. Uh, reading forums, uh, you know, and just, I, I forgot, I forgot about all this great stuff we have out here, you know. And then two years ago, boom. And I don't want her to grow up like that. Um, I, I, I want her to, I guess I see a lot of North American kids as suffering from like nature deficiency syndrome in a lot of ways, you know, they just, Sit there and get fat in front of the TV. I love that smell. You know, and if I want my kid to not do that, if I want her to be out and active and 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 love this beautiful stuff, I got to be a good example, you know. So my plan is to make a, a self-feeding upside-down fire. Um, I watched a couple of videos. I read a bit up on it. And um, I just I want to try it out. So that's what I'm here for this weekend. Um, by the way, I don't really back the idea of shorts and shirt sleeves in uh, most North American wilderness. But for the past week, it's been like 40 degrees and sticky. And I am really stinking hot. Um, so there it is. I'm just hoping for the best. You know, I'm not getting scratched up too bad, but you know, I um, I, I really, really want the temperature to change. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just gathering my my wood. Um, I got some some needles. Uh, I got some birch bark, um, and uh, I'm hoping that for tonight we'll have a nice fire. What I'm saying hoping is because uh, yesterday. Uh, the province got really badly kicked by an epic storm. Um, someone died, there were some injuries. On our drive up here, um, there were trees across the highway, there were wires down at some point, we had to do a couple of detours. And the radio says it might get us again a little later, so I hope I can show you a great new fire technique I've learned. If not, I, there's always, you know, the summer is still, still young, right? So, let's go look for more wood. So, what I'm hoping is that each of these videos will be like um, a new skill that I've decided to learn. Um, something I've read about or something that, <clears throat> that I've seen done on YouTube or something. Um, these videos will more often than not, than not be my first time trying something. Um, so they might be a little embarrassing on occasion, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know, I, I don't I don't call bushcraft a marketed term in a in a derisory way. I'm I, I like what's going on right now, you know. Um, I, I like 
I like gear, you know. I, I like watching guys do cool things. I like learning to do new stuff. And I hope that one day I'm going to like teaching it to my daughter, you know. Um, so, you know, that's it, you know. I have high hopes for myself eating fire tonight. I'm having high hopes for the uh, storm front holding off. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. This upside down fire is much smaller than I would build if I were setting up a campsite rather than just proving the concept. The biggest benefit of a self-feeding fire is that it can keep you warm through the night without the constant need for more fuel. And I have spent enough nights waking up and tending flames to find this concept frankly thrilling. Another benefit is a more efficient burn. This creates better heat and less smoke. This fire can also be used for food prep, which is what we did with ours. But based on our experience, I can't really suggest that you sit around waiting for a full-sized upside-down fire to burn down to cooking embers. If you do that, you'll still be sitting there and hungry the next morning. Instead, when you get hungry, just throw the pot on. So okay, this has been burning for about 45 minutes, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> and as I figured, as each layer burns, the embers fall into the next layer down with the slightly larger pieces, which then uh, catches a light. Um, and it's really good because these larger pieces down at the bottom had been pretty wet from the storms we've been having, but they're just drawing out and lighting up just fine. Uh, so I'm gonna call this a success. And what's cool about this is I haven't had to do a thing to this fire. It has just happily gone on its business. Um, sorry, I just got a little bit of smoke there. Um, so I really like this this uh, method. I think I'm going to use it a lot more often. Um, and I guess that's really all I have to say. Thanks for watching.